we're going to get right into this. And of course, the big story of the day that kind of pulled the rug out from Mr. Diva Rogers himself, Russell Wilson going to my team, Denver. Denver's been the rumored spot for what, five years, probably any good quarterback. They've always just been like, they're a quarterback away. And we have no idea whether that's true or not because they've never actually gotten a good quarterback. So it's the easiest thing in the world to say every year, oh, they're just a quarterback away. Can never prove them right. Can never prove them wrong. They got a quarterback now. This is not a guy, Russell Wilson, who is in his prime, I would say, but he is a huge upgrade over anybody that they've had on the roster uh, since Peyton Manning before his uh, arm went, his shoulder went, whatever the hell happened to him. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There was a great tweet today, like looking at the different quarterbacks that the Broncos have been cycling through since Peyton Manning. They had those like three years and, and the last one, as you said, the, the shoulder is completely shot, but still got it. And done. he won the Super Bowl, right? <laughs> and he still somehow won the Super Bowl. Uh, but man, it has been just a complete and utter shitstorm of QBs. The history. twenty Paxton Lynch. Yeah, twenty. So tw- I got the list right here. Hit it, hit it. Let's Orton, it. Let's... 2011 Tebow. 2012 to 2015, Peyton Manning, Simeon, Simeon, Keenum, Flacco, Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater, and now Russell Wilson. What an absolute just and there was and down yeah, and Brock Osweiler saw some time there. Let's not forget Brock Osweiler. Oh, I mean, yeah, we could probably date that back another 10 years and it would still have a, a yeah, you mentioned Paxton Lee. Like, there's just so many random names that have cycled through there. Uh, but maybe they were just a quarterback away. They certainly were maybe. in 2012 to 2015 when Manning was there. They had some great seasons, obviously a, a Super Bowl uh, in that run there. Um, but now Russell Wilson. So what's the, the fallout here? It's so many things to think about. We'll start with just the Broncos. Our next take will be about the uh, the Seahawks, what the fallout sure. is over there. I bumped Russell Wilson up two spots, not because I think he's necessarily with better weapons here. In fact, DK and Tyler Lockett doesn't really get much better as a wide receiver pairing than those two, but because of how much more I think he's going to be throwing. In his 10 seasons so far in the league with Pete Carroll, the Seahawks have ranked either 31st or 32nd in pass attempts in five of those seasons. Half of his career, this top five quarterback in the league, in my opinion, maybe not anymore, we'll see, but certainly across these last 10 years has shown he has a top five quarterback upside. He has been in the bottom two in pass attempts which is just an asinine, like ridiculous misusage of talent. And to, to kind of further drive that home, the highest they've ever ranked Seattle with Russell Wilson in pass attempts was 16th in 2017. He led all quarterbacks in touchdowns and fantasy points, and he only ranked 16th in pass attempts, and that's what happened. So it goes to kind of show you the ceiling of this guy. He's been insane when they actually finally use him. And so even just a modest bump to like 15 or so, would be huge. And under Nathaniel Hackett, their new offensive coordinator, you know, he's not the pass bonanza, you know, Andy Reid style offense, 16th, 24th, and 15th in pass attempts with Aaron Rodgers, you know, the MVP these last couple of years, but very efficient passing attacks. That was also, you know, not really him calling the plays that I think, you know, that was more the head coach calling the plays there. He did uncork it with Blake Bortles, the fourth most times uh, in his second season calling plays. So if he's going to let Blake Bortles whip it four times around the yard, uh, fourth most pass attempts. He also had a 13th. So like they, I do think, you know, top half of the league is what my expectation is for pass attempts. And that alone is enough, even with the weapons downgrade to bump Russell Wilson up for me. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I agree with pretty much everything you're saying. The way that you're talking about Wilson being used over the, you know, really his entire career reminds me a lot of the way, interestingly enough, that John Elway was used for yeah. about the first eight years of his career, where it's like, okay, this is like the most talented quarterback in the league. He can do anything. Uh, let's let's run on the first two downs with our crappy running backs every single time. And then if we're within spitting distance in the fourth quarter, hopefully he can win it. It was just yeah. the most, and they still went to three Super Bowls doing it because he was so good, even though they lost them all. Uh, Wilson, I believe, has been criminally misused in his career he's not the only one he's a great example of how you know you could be the most talented guy in the world you could land in the wrong spot and you know look Seattle's had success the guy's won a Super Bowl he should have won two Super Bowls Um, and even so I still think that he has not reached where he should have talent wise he's great he's a huge upgrade Um, even if he's a or if the Broncos are a, a middle of the NFL passing team uh, we're going to be seeing a ton more attempts and that's also going to probably result in a ton more rushing yards from him too, because he is good at his game. Man, we, he just, he didn't even really run the last couple years. Remember we were like, Oh, he's a rushing quarterback. And in fantasy, that's so key. And you weren't even getting those yards out of him. 
these yeah, last Yeah, and Hackett years. does love the bootlegs. He loves yeah. the play action. He likes getting his quarterbacks. You see Rodgers on the move a decent amount in the pocket. So I mm-hmm. think this is going to be a great fit in this offense. And as you mentioned, just a slight bump in volume, even if it's not number one in the league in pass attempts. Again, 16. Let's say it's like 10 attempts. or 12 or something right. like that. We're going to see the big numbers. Points as the 16, again, 16th, fans, uh, you know, 16th most attempts in the league. It's, it's insane what I will- this guy can do. I'll, I'll say this and from a real football perspective, that division is a nightmare, right? <laughs> the Holmes, Herbert, even like Derek Carr and the Raiders made the, yeah, the Raiders are no, the Raiders are no joke, man. Insane. I mean, Insanity. And, I mean, that you know, that's tough. So it's like, it's not like, Oh, Wilson's there. Now they're the front runners. It's like, I don't know. They're maybe, they maybe second, third, fourth, maybe even. second. Like, if they, if, if everything falls right, I don't know. Absolutely. So, so that's, that's, man, that's a gauntlet right there. Right. Um, but let's talk about some of his weapons that yeah. he is inheriting in Denver. Let's start with uh, the king of separation himself, Jerry Judy. Yeah, he bumped all the way. Both receivers, actually. All the receivers got at least 20 spots higher, uh, in my opinion. The king of separation, Jerry They're, they're going to catch up, though. I, 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 th- I think that you may end up higher on these guys than some, but like these guys... Are you saying they got bumps from your list? Yeah, that, that okay, plus so 20. So this isn't relative to the ECR. Exactly. No, it's it's bumps up. I, okay. I know the ECR will eventually catch up. So that plus 20, I know I often will do above ECR. That's actually just how many spots they jumped up. So like Jerry Judy was my wide receiver 43. He's now my wide receiver 23. That's how big of an impact yeah, having a guy like Russell Wilson. That's real. It's very real. And I know we were joking, you know, Duck calling him the best separator yeah. in the league and all that earlier. I, but he is a very strong route runner. Yeah, he's one, really one good. One of the smoothest butter type routes. Uh, so he does gain some really nice separation. Uh, and I and I am very excited to see a guy that finally can deliver that rock to him. So maybe this is just what he needed. I think we've all been kind of a year too early, a year too early. It's just the quarterback. He was a quarterback away. So I have Jerry Judy just a spot above Cortland Sutton because I'm also very high on Cortland Sutton. I love Cortland Sutton. He's a contested ball guy. He's a deep threat guy. I had ultimately, he was the main recipient of deep targets these last couple of years with the Broncos. Uh, he saw 29 of their, uh, you know, 60 deep targets, nearly half of them that last year. Tim Patrick saw the other 17 of them. So th- those guys accounted for 70% of the deep targets, Sutton and Patrick. So Sutton also, I mean, uh, Patrick also gets a big bump up. Just thinking about Russell Wilson and what he does up. Well, but pretty much everything. But you, I just had those wet dreams of those mean he, moon he shots a over great Tyler deep Lockett. Ball. He How many times have we seen him just uncork it and just like perfectly drops it right in the basket uh, to his receivers down deep? So it's Sutton, I, I, between him and Judy, I really don't know who I like more. I think Judy's like the obvious, the more talent, the higher draft capital. Like I probably would take Judy, but as I said, again, wide receiver twenty four. I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. I like Judy a lot. I I'm freaked out by the injury that he had last year. <laughs> like, I know it looked so bad. And I mean, it, it ended up not being as bad as it looked, but I was like, Oh, his career's over. Yeah, so, uh, I know he ended up returning. He didn't do yeah, a whole lot. He was good. Uh, but I mean, afterwards. you know, I, I think we'll see. I don't think there's a great reason to like him more than Sutton or less. I, I think that it's kind of like the woods cup thing last year, where obviously there oh, was a, there was a right choice. But, right. you know, it was almost a coin flip for most of us going in. And, and I, right, I think that's a really good comparison, too, because you think about what happened with those two guys, QB injection, big upgrade, two solid, really solid talents at the wide receiver position. And one of them, yeah. if it was going to be one of these guys, I do think it would be Judy in terms of, like, who would be the cup of those two. He just right. has that natural separating ability. So I like that comparison a lot. You just brought in Matt Stafford, and bam, both these uh, – Robert Woods was a top 12 receiver before he got hurt. I wouldn't be shocked at all if both of these guys have top 15 seasons on okay. them. And in fact, I know we're going to talk about the Seahawks guys in a second, but I would take, if I'm drafting today, I would take either Judy or Sutton over either of the Seahawks guys, DK Metcalf, that, Tyler Lockett. Like, yeah. That's it. That's a hot take. That's interesting. And we'll talk about that in a second. Last guy, last weapon we need to talk about on the Broncos, Albert O, uh, Noah Font being sent to the Seahawks as a, a part of this, I'm assuming. And um, so you've got Albert O bumped from tight end 30 to tight end 12. I'm assuming that's a combination of Wilson coming to town and Fant hitting the road. Yep, exactly. Wide open tight end gig. Now he's going to be behind Judy and Sutton on the target pole, but this is a guy that's six, six and runs a sub four, five, 40, just insane athleticism. He got hurt in college, but otherwise was likely to be a first round pick given his measurables, given his dominating rate, all the, like the stats you look at for a tight end, 
he had all of them, and he just got he suffered a bad injury. They got him in the fourth round, despite having fought just because of how far he fell. And now he's the main guy. Now they do have a lot of cap space here. I wanted to kind of lead with that. Even after trading for Russell, they still have about the middle of the pack in terms of cap space, sixteen million left. So they can load up around him. I wouldn't be shocked at all to see them go after a tight end, maybe even Rob Gronkowski, something of that nature, right? Like yeah. bringing the guy, and then yeah. suddenly Albert O gets a big bump down. But if he's the main guy we've seen Will Disley, like Luke Wilson, just nobody's Jimmy Graham led the NFL in receiving touchdowns one year with Russell Wilson. He loves his big bodies in the red zone. He pinpoints it so well. And Albert, oh, six foot six. That's a big body right there. So I really like him as well. I do. I just as a wide receiver weapon, KJ Hamler, I know he's been gotten hurt the, the past couple of years, but this guy's blazing four, three speed. And we talked about those moon shots. Russell Wilson lobs up. Wouldn't be shocked at all. I have been going big in on uh, D. Eskridge in early drafts from over there in Seattle. I'm swapping those two now. As a, as a great last-round dart throw, K.J. Hamler, should he stay healthy, really does have that separation ability, that deep skill set to blow up. So in, especially in like best ball drafts and things like that, if you're looking for a last-round dart throw, K.J. Hamler has shot up another 25 spots on the big board as well. All these also, with what we've seen from injuries uh, yeah. recently, not recently, just forever, but it's like we forget every single year that people get injured all the time. Oh, you yeah. really have four legit receivers. Like that that's great because one of them's going to go down, two of them are going to go down, and you hate to all of a sudden be reduced to what we saw some of these. What were some of the uh, the wide receiver uh cores that people were setting out were sending out at the end of last year where it's like you literally didn't it, hadn't heard of a single person on the team. Exactly. Well, so they I can remember, avoid that. I mean, they got they got legit guys. So in that, my finals, crazy. I was deciding between like Josh Palmer mm -hmm. and I, I forget the last name. It was just ridiculous. It's like that's how it happens in fantasy. Right. You somehow have to get down to this crunch time. So any of those guys could step in at any point and make a huge splash. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments. Check out some more videos and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh. Mm -hmm.